Today, we're going to see what kinds of lamps Google's AI app Gemini will design. We'll start by giving it a simple prompt like create laser cut wood lampshade concept images. Out of all the images, the one at the left of the middle row looks like the type of laser cut lamp that I had in mind. It's similar to all the ones that I design on this channel with panels that interlock with two frames to create an exoskeleton kind of design. I asked Gemini to create similar images to the ones that I liked and here are all the concepts that it developed. All of these lamps are similar to the ones that I've created in the past. My goal is to find a design that's very simple but elegant. The one on the bottom left is definitely the one that stands out. Using the concept image from Gemini, I decided to create a lamp that would be small with a slightly taller base and deeper panel. Using the design file that I created for the rose-inspired lamp in a software called Rhinoceros, I start by deleting all the 3D models and working within one of the frames to create a smaller version for this project. I start by figuring out the overall diameter of the circle. My goal is to have a smaller lamp and be able to fit my hand into the top so that I can attach the light fixture kit and light bulb. I started with a 5 inch diameter but ended up going down to about 4 inches. I used the offset command to create the depth of the frame. I also drew a smaller circle at the center where the light fixture kit would be installed. The smaller circle needs to continue to the outer ring so that the frame can be cut as one piece. I draw a series of lines, offset them, and mirror them around the center point of the circle into 4 quadrants. Then I use the trim command to clean up the design. Now, we need to design attachments around the perimeter of the frame. I modify one of the slots in the frame from the rose lamp design, rotate it so that it's vertical, and move it into the new smaller frame that we're designing. Once it's in place, I use the array circle tool to copy it around the frame. I started with 42 points but decided 36 would work a lot better. Moving to the panel design, I drew two lines, one at 3 inches, which is the height that I need to maintain for the light fixture kit to fit under the bottom frame. The second is 6 inches, which is the height of the panel. I draw a guideline at the center of the 6 inch line and use the curve tool to draw a 3 point curve. I adjust the control points to change the curve and smooth it out. Then I delete and trim the excess lines, join what's left and offset it by half of an inch to give the panel its depth. I add slots to one side, which is where the panel will be attached to the circle frames. When I thought about the original concept image from Gemini, I decided to design a second panel with a deeper section. I copied the panel over, drew a curve that was less concave, and joined it with the rest of the lines. This is important because the depth that we're creating will block more views of the light bulb at the center and have a similar visual effect to the concept image. Now I'll create a 3D model of this design and assemble every piece. I do this by extruding each frame and shape and using the move and rotate tools to move the pieces into place. Once the panel is attached to the frame, I use the array circle tool to copy it around the frames. I repeated this with both panel types and this is how they came out. You can see in this first option that the vertical panels look great but it has a lot more voids where you can see through to the light bulb. In this second option, you can see that the panel depth creates a better visual effect where direct views of the light bulb happen in less areas. It will reflect light from the bulb across the surface area and create a nice soft light on the table. I bring over my 8th inch eco birch plywood and mask it with paper tape to protect the surface from scorches and burns from the laser. I insert one sheet into my laser cutter and start the process of cutting this project. One thing that I notice about the 3D model and will probably see when this lamp is fully assembled is that it looks like a big light bulb. It's not the same as the image that Gemini produced because I needed a way to attach the light fixture kit and raise it off of the table. This is going to be my version of a light bulb lampshade. The alternative would have been to make this a pendant light instead of a table lamp. That would have removed the need to raise the base frame to accommodate and conceal the light kit. For this light bulb shaped lamp, it took a total of 40 minutes to cut all of the pieces. Once I have all of the pieces, I bring them over to my work table and remove the paper masking tape from each piece. I start the assembly process by attaching one of the panels to both circular frames. To do that, I'll use a glue called MaxiCure, which is what I use on all of my projects. I apply it in half of the slots of both circular frames. I bring over the first panel, align the slots, and push them together. I repeat this with the top frame. 
Now, we have a solid attachment and as we attach the remaining panels, the slots will align more precisely and the product will hold itself up. Assembling the rest of this project is easy. We can attach the panels one by one until we make it around the entire frame. In this product design, there's one panel that has a shorter base, which is where the cord for the light fixture kit can pass through. As I repeat this with each of the panels, I can start to see the lampshade coming together. I bring over my light fixture kit and light bulb, install them into the light bulb shaped lamp, and the project is complete. I love the simplicity of this design and the continuous curve that extends from the base of the lampshade up to the very top. I'm also enjoying these smaller table lamps because they can fit on smaller desks and tables while leaving more surface area for writing, reading, or putting a laptop. If you enjoyed this project, check out my other woodcraft videos and consider subscribing. I'll see you again next week. Thank you.